I'm Stephen Carter. I'm the head of the Afghanistan campaign at Global Witness. Um, in Afghanistan, the problems of corruption uh, and lack of institutional capacity, lack of justice, broadly speaking, are very serious and um, very challenging. It's often a question what can be used to be done in those circumstances and certainly it's a very difficult problem but the there are a number of measures which uh, can at least increase the cost of corruption and to bend the curve um, so that we can make quicker progress towards a uh, elimination of uh, corruption in the longer term uh, and essentially there's two aspects to it. There's technical measures that you can put in place that will um, help to make it easier to combat abuses. Uh, and then there's the issue of political will to enforce them. So in terms of the technical measures, what we, what we look at tends to be around um, transparency, community engagement, um, security, uh, and a number of other technical measures which can um, help to make it more difficult to, to commit abuses. So within transparency, we, for example, publication of all contracts, making that absolutely automatic, even making it uh, so that a contract is not in force until it has been gazetted, until it has been put into the public domain. Um, uh, ensuring that the production, for example, in, that, in, the, in the sphere of natural resources, that production figures and tax payments are all made public, so that at least you can have a reference point against which to check um, data on actual production. Uh, and you, know, you can talk to local communities about how much is being mined in a particular area, and then you can compare it to how much tax is being paid. Um, the you know, Having proper rules, for example, for the, um, you know, the, the, the for model contracts for um, services and for mineral concessions, for example. Um, so all those help make it a bit more difficult and open things up to, 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 to scrutiny a little bit more. Um, in terms of community, we would look, for example, at uh, ideas to engage local communities in monitoring of natural resources. Um, again, the area which we specialise in. So we might um, press the government to uh, create an incentive for local communities to benefit from natural resources so that a small percentage of the taxes that are paid go straight back to the local community and that they are then engaged in an effort to monitor those resources. They're given a channel to report um, back on, you know, in a public way on problems in the exploitation of those resources if it's being done legally. Uh, they therefore have an incentive to uh, act against the, um, the uh, illegal exploitation of resources, which reduces the tax payments, and they have a channel by which to do so. That's just one example. Um, and then on security, again, there are, there are uh, measures that can be put in place. For example, the voluntary principles on business and human rights set out basic rules for how security forces should interact with um, local populations, um, the sort of accountability that they should be subject to. Uh, and that can help to increase the pressure against illicit armed groups being involved in, in natural resources. It, one could go on, there's a lot of measures that um, work along these lines. There's the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, um, there are various other international standards in lots of different fields, uh, things like open contracting standards, um, which are a sort of piecemeal jigsaw of pieces that can help to um, increase the cost of uh, abuses. All of those have a great limitation, which is that if there is no political will to enforce them, then the best laws in the world uh, the, the best technical measures are meaningless. So we spend a lot of time trying to integrate these measures into, into the law, into the regulations, into the policies of the government, but we know perfectly well that unless they have you know, the will to enforce them, they won't be, they won't be effective. Um, and that becomes... So, so you know, the work that one does has to be inherently political, which 
does not mean that it becomes political interference, but we have to think about how we work with local civil society, how we work with donors, how we work with the government itself to encourage um, the, that political will. Uh, and the first element, of course, is self-interest, that the government has an interest in increasing the revenue that they get, that links to the power of the central government, their own ability to, you know, to do politics. Um, and that is something which one can emphasise uh, and, and stress. Um, uh, we work with donors, and again, there's a very difficult line that needs to be um, balanced there, because we, uh, on the one hand, the donors have a legitimate interest in... Um, good governance and in holding the government to the commitments it's made uh, to combat corruption. Um, and on the other hand, uh, it's very easy for that to become perceived as uh, a outside interference in Afghan sovereignty. Um, so we, I think, you know, very much encourage donors to use the levers they have, but um, and, and use the levers of aid but use them in a very intelligent way, and in a way that is based on sound universal principles rather than ad hoc reaction which can be seen as basically throwing, throwing the donor's weight around and often can be very counterproductive. Um, so, for example, the proportion of aid that is on budget for governments, that you know, simply goes into the government budget they spend themselves as opposed to being going, rooted directly from the donors to the, uh, to the NGOs or to the contractors who carry out the work. Um, that can be quite a, an effective tool. Um, but there's a myriad of other ways you can look at, for example, you know, which, which commanders are getting access to training or access to new equipment. Um, you know, who is getting the meeting with, you know, with the President of the United States when he comes to visit? Um, who has access to the tools of prestige, you know, power, security, money? Um, and that is something which needs to be done. You know, there needs to be a... a we free ourselves of the burden of the illusion that there is a single silver bullet and understand that what we need is a rigorous but flexible approach that really pushes things as far as we can in each individual circumstance and you know that will vary from circumstance to circumstance but makes a judgment as to how far we can push things and that's that's something which is you know uh, uh, we can't escape from the responsibility of making that judgment but one thing that this means is that we have a particularly important role, um, uh, or rather an important part of our work, is to work with local organisations uh, and with local political actors. So you know, the, the, the outside aspect, the working with donors, is something which is, you know, which is um, an important piece of the puzzle. But really internal pressure is much more effective and much more legitimate. And so that means, first and foremost, engaging with the political actors in Afghanistan, with the policy makers, with the government officials, with the ministers, um, and actually trying to make the case to them, because many of them are, uh, have you know, enlightened self-interest, and many of them indeed uh, have an interest in helping Afghanistan. There are many, you know, um, very dedicated and very hard-working people, both within among the officials and indeed among the, the political class. Uh, it, it means working also with Afghan civil society and the Afghan media. So Afghan civil society is absolutely critical. They can uh, have a much better engagement on the ground with um, you know, local communities. They can gather information. They can be a, a, an early warning system. And they can exercise a political pressure on the government which is of a fundamentally different type and has a different sort of legitimacy to the pressure that we can exercise as an international organisation. We can legitimately exercise some pressure, but local civil society is critical to provide a voice which is coming from inside. So it's very important to work with them to support what they're doing, to help build their capacity, um, but to strike a balance so that they don't become simply extensions of our own work but maintain their independence. So we're always aware that you know, there is a danger that if you have 
too close a relationship on, with NGOs, if they become too dependent on you, that they then lose their own legitimacy because they're seen as essentially covers for um, your own organisation. Uh, and, and so you know, we have a very collaborative approach with local civil society. We help to um, encourage, for example, the creation of coordination groups among local civil society organisations, which makes them more effective. Uh, we help to try and increase their capacity. But we are always very much aware that we are ourselves uh, in listening mode and we have a lot to learn from their own perspective um, and that we have to work with them as, as equals. Um, last, sort of Afghan media, again, very important that you know, it's very easy to focus what we do on the international media to think that you know, the New York Times is the ultimate, um, the ultimate target for what we do. But um, actually working with Afghan media can be a much more effective way of getting the message out to Afghans and of um, you know, catching the attention of the, of the political actors within Afghanistan. That has some risks as well, but it's, um, it's an essential tool for what we do. So you know, across the whole spectrum, one has to look for the opportunities that are there to engage people's interest, to... Um, bring legitimate pressure to bear on people, and just to make the case for the sorts of reforms we're needing. Um, uh, bearing in mind that there is no conflict between the sort of, sort of things which we're advocating for and the interests of the country. Indeed, we are most effective when we are um, best able to serve you know, the, the people of Afghanistan, which is you know, the point of everything we're doing. And it's a tricky balance to strike. There are so many different ways of acting and so many delicate issues. Um, but one can have a positive impact in that environment. Um, and you know, it's tremendously interesting to try and work out more effective ways of doing that.